Here we're going to be looking at restriction enzymes. Now enzymes, as you may remember from our previous units, can break something apart or put something together. In this case, they're going to be separating something. And that something is DNA. They're going to be breaking apart nucleotides at very specific sequences. This is a restriction enzyme doing this. So restriction enzymes, they bind to specific short sequences, only four to six bases long in a DNA sequence. And the nucleotide sequence, what's interesting, uh, in both DNA strands is identical when read in opposite directions. So you can see here, G-A-A-T-T-C. Well, if we read it in this direction, G-A-T-T-C. Read the same in, in opposite directions. Uh, there's different restriction enzymes, uh, and they basically look for different recognition sites that they're going to cut the DNA. Example here, we have our DNA, our Hindi 3 restriction enzyme, cutting it right here, resulting in two sections now of DNA. And this is another example here for the ECO-R1 restriction enzyme. Most restriction enzymes cut the DNA in um, staggered fashion. This causes, it generates sticky ends. What this term sticky ends means is they want to kind of rejoin together. They want to rebind. They want to be kind of left hanging out there. These ends pair with any other DNA fragment and generate some of the, of the same enzymes. When we're pairing it together, DNA ligase again comes back, and that is what's linking our DNA together to form our double-stranded back again. Sticky ends versus blunt ends. So sticky ends have sections that overlap and have bases attached, which results in the likelihood they will rejoin with complementary base pairs. So again, think about it here, this little green line, if we separate it out here, we're going to get what's called sticky ends. This end is going to kind of want to stick back to this end. Contrary to that, we call something called blunt ends, and these have limited contact in the direct cuts, just cutting the DNA right here in this sequence. Here, these sticky ends have a little bit more of an area where we could be binding. Blunt ends are just going to be like this. They kind of want to rejoin. It's a little bit harder for them to rejoin. Where here, our sticky ends have a larger area that wants to bind, and that's what's causing the sticky part. Restriction enzymes are specific, and this is an important fact here. Um, if there's a change in just one of the base pairs of an ECO-R1 site, and again, it's just a restriction enzyme, the codon uh, will be changed. This can result in the loss of a cut site along the DNA, meaning this ECO-R1, these four to six-ish bases, depending on what um, restriction enzyme we're looking at, they are looking for a very specific sequence. If you don't get that very specific sequence, you get a mutation in one of those, you may lose a cut site or generate a cut site in somewhere else along the DNA strand. So this is where you do not want to have a mutation occur. Restriction enzymes, what they're actually used for, um, they, they defend against infectious agents like viruses. Enzymes that cleave or cut up DNA are important. If foreign DNA gets put into a cell, we have our bacterial genome, we have our viral genome here being injected into the cell with the virus. Well, cells naturally generate these restriction enzymes to go through, recognize this as a foreign DNA, and chop it up before it can reroute all the machinery of that cell. This is why it's important to have these. We're going to talk about them in relation to how they're used for biotechnology, uh, but they are in the natural sense. They're not completely man-made, and they are used to chop up what would be invading uh, DNA. Examples of restriction enzymes, you don't have to memorize those. These are just some ones that are very commonly used where they, where they come from. ECO-R1 and Hindi-3, I know, are very common. Uh, I've used those in the lab. Uh, and this is just the specific sequences that they look for. Again, remember our 5' prime and 3' prime regions, we talked about DNA. So this orients yourself in the DNA. And they each have a very specific recognition, recognition sequence, which will be important for where it's specifically going to cut.